work from home jobs is a pretty hot topic. What's happening guys? So I've been researching some of the highest work from home jobs available. And for me, the stoke level for this video is incredibly high because due to the recent antigen, a lot of people are looking into remote jobs and work from home careers. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, Shane, perfect timing. With all the stuff happening in the world, I never want to leave my house again. I had a feeling you'd say that. And that's why I looked into the videos that were available on this subject. And I was pretty disappointed doing surveys for two dollars an hour becoming a BitConnect day trader selling your soul for likes in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm not all of these are good options but in this video I'm going to go over work from home jobs that won't be a huge waste of your time and you might actually be able to make pretty good money from them that way if you want to you can permanently live in your basement and never leave your house again or if you want to you can travel the world and live the laptop lifestyle let's jump right in with number 10 on the list which is going to be online tutoring and this is one that I have a lot of experience with I did this during college. So during college, I had to take this test in order to get into pharmacy school. It was called the PCAT, and that stands for the Pharmacy College Admissions Test. I spent a ton of time researching the best ways to study for this test. I checked out a bunch of different products and did a ton of research and studied a lot, and I ended up doing really well. A bunch of my friends that were also in pharmacy school wanted to know how I did so well on the test, and so I basically for free just shared the information with them that I had learned. After a while, a lot of people that were outside of my friend group but were still on the pharmacy track and they were going to take the PCAT also wanted to know how I did so well on the test. So I started charging for my time and eventually I ended up charging over $100 an hour to tell the people the right resources to use as well as the right way to study for the test. So this was a win-win situation for both parties involved because it took me hundreds of hours to figure out the best resources and how to spend time on studying for the test. And I was able to save them both the time and the money in figuring out what to study and also spending their money on a bunch of products that they didn't really need. Now there's a ton of other different examples of tests that you could tutor people on. You've got the SAT and the ACT that you take right before you graduate high school, for instance. The key here is to have specialized skills or specialized knowledge that other people want to learn from. Making cheesy references to different memes and pop culture. Yeah, that's basically my only skill. But it's not just tests. You can tutor people on all kinds of different subjects. For instance, if you know English, which you probably do if you're watching this video, you can tutor people who not only want to learn English, but they want to learn the American vernacular. A lot of people want to learn this because of the fact that business is becoming so international and people want to be able to communicate with Americans. Now there's many websites out there such as QKids or Camly that you can get started with this sort of thing on. If you're really good at something that a lot of people aren't very good at like say math for instance that's another one that you can tutor people on and of course all of this can be done over Skype or Zoom very easily. Number nine on the list is going to be a support specialist and this is going to be someone who is either a customer support specialist answer the phone or maybe you're even doing phone sales. Okay so you're probably thinking that you don't want to do a job like this. Nobody grows up thinking that they want to be a customer support specialist when they grow up. But the reason that I included this one on the list is because this is one of the easier ones to actually get a job in. It's also extremely flexible and you can do it just about anywhere that you are. A good example of this is kind of this weird channel that I followed for a couple of years now where this girl basically just lives out of her Toyota Yaris. She just drives all around the country in her little Toyota Yaris and she like sleeps in it and she just lives out of it. And she did one video where she talks about what she does for a living and she was a customer support specialist. She just wakes up in the morning in her car and she just starts answering phone calls and answering emails right away. Now, obviously, most of my viewers are not going to want to live a lifestyle like she does. It's kind of weird, but this just goes to show you how flexible this type of job can be. Now, you might be thinking that these types of jobs have all been outsourced to other countries and a lot of them have, but that's not entirely true. Many companies want Americans to do the customer support because that does end up increasing the overall customer satisfaction. Now, for number eight, the next one on the list imagine that you're at a party you're having a good time someone walks up to you and they ask you what you do for a living and you reply I'm a qualitative data search engine evaluator number eight on the list is going to be a search engine evaluator so there's a ton of different apps that do this they generally pay between 12 and 15 dollars an hour and I'll just read a few of them off to you there's Lionbridge, Appen, iSoftStone, Zero Chaos, and there's a couple more. And you're probably asking yourself, what the heck does a search engine evaluator do? So search engines like Google and YouTube have a bunch of different algorithms that they use to make sure that whatever you're searching for, that type of content is going to be relative, high quality, and of course, useful. Now, they do a relatively good job of this automatically, but there are some types of content out there that they have to have actual people review. If they don't do this, there's always going to be some errors because as smart as AI is getting, it's still not going to understand the nuances 
of pop culture, for instance. So this is where the search engine evaluator comes in. Let's say that someone is interested in seeing if Beyonce is pregnant, they might type into Google Bay Prague. An algorithm is not going to automatically know what this means unless it has some level of human input. Now, most of these companies prefer hiring Americans if the algorithm is working in the United States, for instance, because we understand the nuances of pop culture and just the culture in general. Now, it's a pretty cool job, and on top of that, about 60% of the time, girls will be impressed by your job title. 60% of the time, it works every time. Next on the list is going to be finessing your way into becoming one of Mr. Beast's friends. Just kidding, but if you go in this direction, it is possible that you could work with Mr. Beast someday. Number seven on the list is going to be a remote business related career. So I have a lot of friends who went to business school and they got business related degrees. And out of all the different types of degrees and careers, there's three that have done pretty well during this whole, you know, quarantine pandemic thing. And those three are basically health careers, uh, technology related careers that are remote, and then business related careers that are remote as well. Now, of course, not all types of business related careers have done well. There are many out there that are not remote. And some of those people unfortunately got laid off. But overall, the ones that have done well during this pandemic are people that were able to do their job remotely. And you'd be surprised how many of them are actually like this. I have a friend who works in the finance industry, for instance, and she has a nine to five really good job. And when all this happened, she was really scared. But it turns out that her job was able to be done remotely. And she is basically just chilling at her parents house. And she's She's working a normal nine to five schedule like nothing happened. Her career didn't skip a beat at all and she was surprised at the fact that she could do pretty much everything that she was doing before, but all of it remotely. Now it's hard to say how much you're gonna get paid doing this. There's so many different careers out there, but I can give you one example. Product managers, for instance, are responsible for the planning as well as the execution of the life cycle of a product. They make around $135,000 a year. There's 286,000 jobs available and it's growing at 8%, which is much faster than average. Now, I do have to say that remote jobs generally will get paid a little bit less than their non-remote counterparts, but oftentimes it's not as much as you might think. Number six is going to be the online version of your current job. Now, on that same vein of, you know, business-related careers, there's actually remote versions of a lot of different careers as well. And you're probably thinking, Shane, there's no way that I could do my career online. That's just not an option. And until recently, that was probably true, but recently jobs have become more and more location independent. And no, this doesn't involve bribing your boss, selling your kidneys, selling your kids, or selling your kids' kidneys. None of that. So take a pharmacist, for instance. So the image that you have in your head of a pharmacist is probably someone who works in a retail pharmacy, maybe a grocery store, for instance. And there's no way that that job could be done remotely, right? Actually, several friends of mine, people that I went to school with, are now pharmacists that do their entire job remotely. What they mostly do is verify prescriptions, take calls, and then call people in order to set up up different, you know, medication related therapies. There's also a lot of opportunities out there for medication evaluations and counseling online as well. And it's definitely worth a try to talk to your boss about it. Maybe you only end up getting a few days a week out of the office, but that would still be nice as well. Number five on the list is going to be social media marketing and digital marketing. Now with this one, you can expect to be paid over $25 an hour. And this is another one that's gotten really big in the last few years. Now, more and more businesses are needing to have an online presence. And what they really need is young people to create their content, do their digital marketing, as well as running ads on different platforms. Now, as you can imagine, this is, of course, a type of job that you can do from home. Now, there's a ton of courses online that'll charge you like $19.97 in order to teach you how to do digital marketing. I really don't recommend that you have to take up any of those courses. You can check out some free stuff here on YouTube, or you can maybe do a Skillshare course if you want something that's a little bit more packed in. And after doing that, after trying it on your own for a little bit, if it's something that you really enjoy doing, then maybe you can purchase a more expensive course. Now, many of these courses will try to teach you to do contracting, basically, where you charge the company maybe $5,000 a month in order to do their digital ads. But it's really difficult to get these types of contracts, especially when you don't know what you're doing already. So what I actually recommend is trying to become an employee for different companies and doing digital marketing as an employee. And then after that, you can try to do some freelancing on the side if you want to. Speaking of freelancing, number four on the list is going to be freelance work. Another great option is to do freelance
freelance work on sites like Upwork. Now, this is by its nature an online job and there's a lot of really good opportunities out there. Now, I recommend if you get into this one that you choose something that pays really well. So for instance, if you're a programmer, consider learning SQR, which makes around $170 an hour. If you're a marketer, consider learning about lead magnets, which makes around $150 an hour. If you like to make videos, consider learning about video processing, which makes over $100 an hour. Or maybe if you're a photographer, you can try to go into food photography, which makes over $95 an hour. I think you get the idea here. It's all about supply and demand. The key is to look into whatever market that you want to enter, figure out where the opportunities are, and then learn the skills that you need in order to do that specific thing that people need. You really want to specialize in one thing and don't do anything else. The biggest mistake that people make is they try to be a generalist and they're like, oh, I'll do anything related to graphic design, for instance. And that's a huge mistake because people will not value your skills. Now, freelancing is a great business model and a lot of people do start off as freelancers and then they move on to the next business model, which I think is even better. Number three on the list is going to be consulting. Now, this one varies a lot, but a lot of the time you can make over $100 an hour. So like I said, a lot of people start as freelancers and they do really well there and they get to a certain point where they have enough work that they can't really increase their income because the only way that you can increase your income is to either work more hours or increase the price. And there's only so much that you can increase the price and still stay competitive on the market. So the business model of freelancing is basically done for you where you do some kind of service for someone else. For consulting, the business model is done with you where you teach someone how they can do that service themselves. Now, as you can see, this is a much more scalable business model because of the fact that you can create courses, you can create videos that teach people how to do whatever skill they're trying to learn. Now, as with freelancing, you want to specialize in some Something that has a lot of market value. Again, it's all about supply and demand. Number two on the list is going to be web development. And this one oftentimes will make over $35 an hour. Now, according to BLS, web developers are making $73,000 a year. There's 160,000 jobs available and it's growing at 13%, which is much faster than average. Now, this is a type of job where you can get paid pretty well and you don't actually have to have a degree in order to get your foot in the door. Now, there's a ton of different types of web development out there. So again, you wanna specialize in something that has a lot of demand. And a lot of people start off as web developers and then they move on to the next one on the list, which is going to be software engineers. Now, software engineers oftentimes can make over $50 an hour very easily. And I made a video where I argued that it's a good idea to get a computer science degree and I kind of went over all of my logic in that video. CS graduates tend to make more money and they tend to rise to higher positions within a company. And software developers make $105,000 a year on average, and that's with 1.3 million jobs available and it's growing at a ridiculous 21%. However, the truth is that there's so much demand for these types of skills out there that there's no way that the computer science graduates could meet all of that demand. And because of that, many people are able to break into this industry with a different degree like maybe a math degree or a physics degree, or in some cases, no degree at all. And there's no way that the 9,800 computer science graduates every single year are going to fill up the 1.3 million jobs available. And that's a fact. Thank you for watching my video. I made it just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Thank you so much for watching.